Right. Morning again. Um, welcome to our block three, week three, day one, the first session. Um, it's kind of a difficult, tricky unit uh, in terms of the assessment, but there is a lot you can learn. That's always for sure. And, uh, you know, I'll do my best, um, you know, uh, to justify the content and clear your doubts. Yeah. Right, so um, let's get started. Undertake project work, that's the, the name of the unit. What we're going to learn here, we, have, we will learn what is a project, the so definition of a project. How do you develop plans for the project? Um, administer and monitor project? Finalize project and review project? Because once you have developed the plan, it's your time to action what you plan. Once you action what you plan, you have to finalize it, like wind it off, and finally review or monitor it. If everything is on track, do you need to do additional things to really bring it on track, yeah? Right, I'm also reading the chat in between and replying to everyone. Okay, um, right, so let's get started. So first of all, defining the project. So what is a project? It contains some part, you know? Um, so first of all, a project initiation document. Now, we might have dealt with various projects over our journey of life, professional or personal. Um, let's talk about personal because that's easy to connect with everyone. If you wanted to go on a holiday, don't you need some planning, some project planning? You find out some good deals. You arrange for visas if it is overseas, right? Or you arrange for accommodation, you arrange for transportation, what to pack, what not to pack, right? So you have all the planning. You initiate uh, the project. You plan for it. You organize everything, right? You try to control the expenditure. Right, you try to control um, any other negative side of it. You know, it could be uh, some sick, someone getting sick, or some food or everything. Right, you control to your best ability, best human ability. And once you come back, or once you are there, your trip project is getting closed. Yeah, same thing can be about workplace. Like most of you is telling me about the workload. If you are hiring someone, for example. If you're hiring someone, then you need some planning. Starting from approval, um, then advertisement, then recruitment, then comes the induction, then comes the training. And once they settle, you go for some quarterly review, some half yearly review, yearly probation plan or review, right? Which is what, again, is a part of the project. Right, so this is how we can define a project. Yeah, I mean, no hardcore definition of project that's not required, but you need to know what is a project. Yeah, the essential of project management you need to be able to manage the resources that you have and use them in such a way that you can complete the project in line with the goals that you initially set for the project. So before you even started the project, you might have planned for something, isn't it? right? You might have some goals for that. It's called PLOC. You need to ensure that you are achieving those goals in line of what you had planned for. P for plan, L for lead, O for organize, C for control. The same thing that we got here. P O C. Yeah, P L O C. planning an overall plan of implementation of the project, leading the team towards the objective, organize the resources, and initiate the activities, take a control and monitoring against the initial plan. Whatever you have planned, you need to plan, match it against the initial objective. Now, what do we mean by initiate the project? In order to initiate the project, you need to identify the goal. That's the basic first thing. List the objective. Identify who is getting involved. 
right? If it is a recruitment and something, then you need the HR manager. You might need some finance manager's approval as well, company director approval as well, you know. Um, so they are the person or individual to be involved. Identify any constraint, assumption, and risk. If you're hiring someone, if you're hiring processes not that strong, if you don't um, have enough background check, for example, you are at the risk of selecting a wrong employee. If your training isn't that great, then you are leaving employee on the field who are half trained. That's not great again. Yeah, so you need to really identify any risk, any assumption. You might have assumed, oh, okay, the employee who will come will be able to take this much of workload. That's an assumption. Any assumption that you make will take or invite some risk. You might have assumed that, oh, okay, um, they'll be working for 40 hours a week, but they say, oh, okay, I can't do this day or I'm sick or, you know, all that assumption that you might have will always attract some risk. Next thing is identify stakeholder. So what do we mean by stakeholder? Is any person who is involved in that project or involved in the work is classified as a stakeholder. Right? How do you identify stakeholder? Uh, okay. Now I have something to share here. Okay. There is one thing called, I'll find that link and share it to you guys. It's called stakeholder analysis metric. What it does. It, um, it puts your stakeholder into various categories. There are four categories of it, four broad categories of them. Yeah. Um, let me find it now. Sorry. Um, can I share the screen? Um, let me pause sharing for a bit. This one, sorry. Pause sharing. I might cover this in future, but I thought, uh, you know, I'll cover it now. Okay, so I'll share one link with everyone. And that's a good website to visit in your spare time, not necessarily now. Okay. I'll share the whole screen, that's fine. Okay, this is what I was saying, right? So there are four categories of stakeholder. Um, sorry, this is what I was saying. Um, this is the interest from low to high. This is a power from low to high. Up here, you got a list of stakeholder which you just minimal effort. You don't spend too much energy of engaging them. When the power is high, but your interest is low, right? Just keep them satisfied because they have a good, greater power. They are not interested in what you are doing, but they have a greater power to control what you are doing. 
Yeah, could be government body, for example, but they're not interested in your day-to-day -day work, but they have a very good power even to shut down your company if you're not doing the right things. Yeah, if they don't have enough information. Up here, they have a very good in interest, very high interest, but they don't have any power. It could be customer, for example. They really like to know more about your company, but they don't have any power. So again, don't spend too much time on you know updating them just a news bulletin or a media or email or marketing channel will do the job but this is a part where you need to spend a lot of energy and time they are your company director senior person and all that people engage closely and influence actively you need to keep them in a loop in everything that you do okay the other part is this which is the same thing but the least important is a public transport provider. You know, it could be this part meets the need. You know, citizen living nearby, uh, show consideration, other commuter, all that thing. Key player is minister, you know, all that supplier, all that person, the writer, uh, you know, this thing. Uh, again, I'll share this link. If anyone is interested, please visit that. But, you know, you need to analyze your stakeholder very accurately and okay? um, invest your energy and time accordingly. Okay? Identify a stakeholder. That's what I was saying. Analyzing stakeholder, again, dividing them into four different quadrants. Two links are shared in chat. Um, Please, uh, you know, uh, refer to those. Now, what is a project stock, scope document? So it, it starts with a scope statement. Then there's a list of constraint, the condition, constraint. There are some assumption, inclusion, exclusion, what should be there always, what should not be there. List of task, quality, and standards any estimate, any statement of contract. This everything should be there in the scope of a document, scope of a project document. I mean, we're gonna have to cover this lot in a task, so don't worry about, you know, we'll have some template and everything. Right? think right scope the project that should be scope of the project should be used actively during the entire running of the project to ensure that the project is meeting its objective and it has been concluded, conducted, are running according to the scope document. Whatever you are doing should be within the definition. If you need to amend that document, please do it because that's not only for you, that's for everyone and a guiding tool, right? Uh, just for example, if I'm marking your work, that's a guiding document for me. If I need to change something, I need to do it. So everyone who is using that document is clear on what that document is asking for. Yeah, what are the requirements with the document? Then we got responsibility and authorities. A project manager needs to identify limits of each person's responsibility, right? This is scope of their responsibility. If you don't clearly state this, members of the team may either go off or make changes without n n having no authority and there'll be a chaos for the project. Okay, now just for example, just in this training room, right? Can you guys do anything with the laptop you want? Can you install any um, software you like? Or can you do the assessment in whatever ways you like? No. Why? Because there is a clear statement defining what is expected from you, which could be a code of conduct in a general behavior. But when it comes to project document, it's called roles and responsibility. Who will do what? A clear black and white. I guess I can say, Edward, this is your responsibility. This is what you're doing. And by this time, I want this much to be done in terms of percentage, in terms of the number of tasks. 
Ferris, you will do this. Right, Michael, you will do this. Peter, that's your job. Right, Soraya, that's what you will take care of. Everything. If that's not there, all of you might interfere with one another's work. But if that's documented clearly, then there is no interference. Key governance, roles and responsibility. There has to be one project client or owner, project sponsor, or the whole committee, a manager, manager of the project manager, project team members, and reference group of working party. That's some of it. Who owns the project? So if anything is not clear, that is a go-to person. Everyone should contact them. Project sponsor? Like, for example, if you are coming here, who is a sponsor for this training that you are getting? Is it yourself? Is it your company? Or is it a bilateral funding program? Or is it some external person who is sponsoring your fees, sponsoring your accommodation, any other expenses, meal or whatever? Yeah. Project manager who is managing the project. Manager of the project manager, who is that person reporting to team members and any working party or reference group? This is very clear and important. Roles and responsibility and authorities must be negotiated and understood by all stakeholders every second, every instant. Negotiated, so you're not imposing on someone that this is what they should be doing. There has to be a mutual agreement. You know, you draft a plan, right? For example, if I have 10 person on my list, I will draft a plan and get everyone's approval on what they should be doing rather than telling them what they should be doing, okay? Next, clarifying the relationship of the project to the other. As a manager, one of the first thing you need to learn is to judge with projects are most important or need the most attention. Here are some of the ideas how we can organize the priority. Time, work backwards from your deadlines. Cost, get help from the family and friends. Scope, don't be afraid to make compromise and delegate the work which you can't do. Deadline key priorities will really um, set your project on time. You have to follow deadline. The same thing goes with every work that you do. If you don't stick to the deadline, there's always a, there's a reason deadline is there, timeline is there. If you don't follow it, there'll be a pile of work. Ultimately, you are the one to do it. Whether you take pressure or not, whether you take pressure as you go or you take pressure everything in one go. Project resources. When you are beginning a new project, it is important that you identify the availability of your resources. What you actually need, what you actually have. And you need to have a balance between them, isn't it? If you are having so much of shortfall of the resources, you need to organize that bit earlier. Get an approval. One of the key resources is a human resource. The people, the men that you need, the women, female that you need, human resources. If you don't have them, start planning how you will recruit them or get someone qualified on your team. Roles and responsibility of project team members. There should be no ambiguity about the roles and responsibility, which means the roles and responsibility must be defined in details. Like I said, it should be on a paper, extreme clearly pointed. And you need to spend time with your stakeholder to gain their approval. You don't need to impose them that I shouldn't be telling my team members that this is what you are doing in terms of the project. I need to sit down with them that okay, this is the purpose you are hired for and this other work you should be doing. You happy with that? They should be able to say yes. If not, negotiate a bit of adjustment. Resources to be planned for the project also include some space and material. Where are you going to conduct the activity? 
Like for example, this classroom is a space, isn't it? Yeah. So I need to plan for it. I mean, whoever is planning, it's just not me. Yeah. But we need a planning for it. Right. Where are you taking place? What do you need? Do you need a laptop? Do you need a projector? Do you need a headset? Right? Charger? All these chairs, desks, some back table, fans, light, X, Y, Z. They are all part of human resource, capital resource. Capital includes all this thing, the finance part of it. Yeah. Anything that you do, anything that you buy comes with a cost, doesn't it? Yeah, comes with a cost. You can't simply assume that whatever you are doing comes for free. Now, nah, I mean, you need to really plan for it. Yeah, get some approval for it. Okay. All good so far? Is everyone happy with what we have discussed? Any question? Okay, what I will do, I'll also share the PPT. So if anyone wants to read it, you can read it. Okay, I'm sending that in a chat to start with. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, Wilson. Wilson is my very good, very dear friend. He always responds very promptly. I like that, Wilson. Even one or two responses will really help me. Uh, okay, it's it's making sense, you know, because like I said, um, it's a bit heavy in the vocabulary or terminology, you know, um, so might fit all right, okay, what's going on, you know, but uh, yeah, I'll try to add examples where I can. Cool, um, moving on. So now we got all the planning in place, it's time to develop the project plan. It's time to develop the project plan. The project plan is a basis for monitoring and controlling the project. The final step is in, a, in the process of to consolidate all the information and prepare the plan. The project plan builds information, builds on the information provided in the project proposal. So you design a document project proposal, then it's your time to draft the plan, develop the plan. Yeah. So what do you need at this stage? We will now examine the actual planning needed. What do you need? Develop a task list, estimate time, sequence. Like that's very important. If you don't have the right sequence of the task to be done, for example, let's talk about a simple day to day stuff for your trip, right? Do you need to, if, let's say you are planning to go to Europe. Just giving a very good example, right? What do you need to take care of? Do you need to take care of the visa first? Or do you need to take care of the meal that what you're going to eat when you reach there? Which should be your priority? Yeah? Or do you have to take care of meals, the food? Or do you have to take care of the visa in terms of the sequence of tasks? Yes, Norman. Okay. Yep. Of course, we have to take care of the visa or the flight first. Yeah. Once every every big priority has been settled down, then you might think of what you're going to do where or what you're going to eat. Because that is not a priority. Your priority is what if your visa is not approved on time? Or if your flight is not booked in time? If you wait everything till last minute, maybe it's damn expensive. You won't be able to go. Now forget about what you're going to eat or wear. That doesn't appear. Right? So that's 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 the key. You need to have sequence of the task. If you 
on some HR people, some human resources, right? Um, the first thing is to place an ad, get an approval, then comes recruitment. I mean, a part of recruitment could be like, you know, reference check and interview and, you know, uh, giving all the screening of applicants and all that thing, right? Uh, background check. Um, once the interview process, selection process has been done, then comes the induction or the training. Yeah, then comes the actual workload. You cannot shuffle that order. Otherwise, you're messing up the whole project. If you skip any of it, yeah, first thing first, rightly said, Wilson. Yeah, so sequencing that task is, again, a skill. Yeah, you need to. Right, we develop a schedule and a milestone and a return project plan. prioritize and schedule the task. To be effective at scheduling, you need to be aware of what each task involves and how is it done. In what order the task should be performed? What resources are needed to complete the task? What is the deadline? How do you know if it's done or not? And what factors must influence the confluence, may influence the completion? Estimating the time. Be realistic with the estimation of time. If you think everything is fine and you can squeeze in time and do it in a really short way, you might be mistaken. You might be mistaken there. Yeah, so don't do it that way. Be realistic on how much time it actually needs. Right? There are two main reasons to get your estimate right. If you don't get your estimate right, because it's a sequence of tasks, if your task number two takes really longer, then all tasks following two will take longer. Yeah. Next come sequences of the task. Always have a to-do list, okay? Uh, let me show you. I follow Trello. There are a lot of to-do list template. Um, Eisenhower metric. I'm going to play a nice piece on Eisenhower but maybe in a bit, um, not now. Trello has been my personal favorite. I use Trello a lot, not these days, because now my task list is very simple, training, marking, training, marking, and I mark as I go, yeah? Uh, Right, um, that's why workspace, where does that go? So if you don't use a lot, I think that's what it is. Right, so when I used to work with a company called David Jones, I used to use Trello a lot, literally a lot. Like that was my everyday thing. and. Um, where does that go? Oops. Um, no, I haven't deleted that. That's for sure. Okay, one sec, guys. Recent. Ah, oh, that's the one. Yes. Like I said, I used to use a lot. Okay. So I always have few things to do, future reminder, and done. Right. And then I modified them recently because I was using this as a part of my training every time. 
So the word says Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O. You have to create an account. So everything will be saved here and then use them for your priority. So this is the name of the brand, right? Whatever I was doing it, I always have, say for example, this one. If it is done, I'll just drag and drop here. If I'm working on it, I'll just drag and drop here. Anything that I want to have a better one, I'll go edit, right? I'll open that card. I'll have the fancy background. I can collaborate with someone. I can add the members here. I can have some checklist here, you know, uh, copy items from anything that I like, add, and there'll be checklist here, right? And then I'll say how many percent it's been done. I can change the cover to make it more attractive. Let's talk about some space and everything. This is great. This, this one is great. Yeah, so that's the cover. I can add members, I can add labels like green, blue, and then I can rename it. That means green is this, you know, the red means urgent. Let's talk about red, right? And let's save this buddy. Yeah, I think it's auto saved. And there you are. This one looks totally different. It has a red color with it. I can add or email anyone that I like. Okay, whatever is done, whatever is to do, right? I created something last year to meeting with Mr. Joseph and to do. I can keep on adding things here. This is to do. I can go add a card. Uh, remind everyone with the deadlines. And it's there. That's it. Don't talk rubbish in the class. Yeah, whatever. And then I think, oh, it's done. Then I can move it to done. Yeah, drag and drop as you go. You can create any fancy background. You can ask more people to join. Okay. That's what it is, Trello, my personal favorite. There are a lot simple one as well. There is something called AnyDo, which I use it now these days for my personal stuff. But a very... I mean, it's been upgraded. I'm on a beta version, but a very simple uh, to-do list. You know, um, you can use that one as well, any do. Um, Trello is another one. And this is about Eisenhower metric. So what it does, it puts your task into four different priorities. Quadrant one, where you're reducing uh, you know, then delegating the scheduling and declutter. Right? This is not a very good example. So where this go? Yes, that's what I like. It's urgent and important. Do it. Urgent and not important. Delegate it. Not urgent, not important. <clears throat> Simply delete it framework. I have some videos which I'll play it later. Yeah, so that's more about Eisenhower metric, which allows you to prioritize your work. Yeah, there's a lot um, you, you can read from there, okay? Another one is a gun chart. I can spend decent time on a gun chart, but not necessarily now, some later part in the day or the week. Critical path matter, which is again, very difficult one. Um, so I'm not talking about it in, in at all. Um, I can share some links for it if anyone is interested. Okay, my tool is a very good website. If you need to refer to some leadership articles this is a very very good website i would say yeah you can log in to save your favorite article and with that one you know if you need to read something or oh, gun chart then you again that has a hyperlink right uh, and there is a lot that you use. yeah there's a lot that you can do okay i mean it's very difficult i'm not talking about it um yeah but anyone who is interested um, who feels like, oh, I should be able to nail this one, then please, yeah? That's a gun chart. 
which I will cover some later part in the week as a part of the assessment as well. Yeah, what is it and everything will we'll cover that bit later. Okay, so that will keep you keep your sequence on track. Okay. We got some risk management procedure. So you have to identify the risk, quantify it, respond, and monitor and control. Okay. Once you identify the risk, you have to quantify it. What percentage is it really great or respond to the risk? Once you identify, quantified, you know, then you respond to the risk and finally monitor and control to ensure that you are still on track with it. Next comes risk responses. So there are some of the responses to the risk, acceptance, avoidance, transference, and mitigation. Okay, risk of corona, right? We all have accepted it, that if you're in an open public space, don't worry about the Department of Health data, risk is always there. Yeah. The avoidance, it's always best to avoid the risk, right? Avoidance is one of the, one of the good way if you can't really uh, control it. You know, again, Corona, it's better to avoid it. How do you try to avoid it? You always have enough precautions, hand sanitizer, mask, and following all the safety procedure, you know, if any symptom, get tested, get isolated, all that kind of thing, right? Transference. This transfer the risk to others in a project. If you're at risk, you transfer to other stages. Um, and finally, mitigation, right? Small action that will reduce either the chance of the risk or severity of that should happen. So that's about mitigation. The cost, the money factor, the budgeting factor. Money is never an unlimited source and it requires good planning of it, whether it's your project, whether it's your personal stuff. When we get our salary, we always have a debt to pay. We always have a bills to pay, rental bills, the electricity, um, all the utilities, schools fees, you know, any, any leftover, you know, we try to invest or, you know, for our future, which is not an ideal way of doing it, but this is what we are doing it, yeah. Compile your project plan document. A project plan is a roadmap and should tell you where you are, where you are going, how you will get there, when you will get there, what are the constraints. Like everything, everything should be there. Okay. Now consultation. There's a lot you can do about consultation. Let me just um, copy this and paste in chat. Just read that. Just read what I have it on the chat, on the screen.
some of the things described here is the qualities of leader as well. You know, great qualities of leader, like for this one, this too. Never, never accept credit yourself. And if there is anything that goes wrong, you uh, take the blame. Because you were the leader. You were the consulting person. Yeah. Okay, I also shared the learner's guide in an entry. Then we come to finalizing the plan. So what does finalizing mean? It's almost impossible to conduct and manage project if it does not have a well-defined project plan and it's been signed after approved. It's finalized when it's formally accepted, it's approved by the sponsor and other stakeholder. If they approve it, if they sign it, that means they agree. They might have done all the reading. I mean, you can assume that, right? That they have done all the reading before signing it and they are happy with the timeline. They're happy with the resources being utilized, happy with the budget that's there, right? So that comes in finalizing the plan. And they might come back and say, oh, okay, you are asking too much for a small budget. Let's reduce the cost. And then it's called some modification, right? Revise the project plan. Ensure accountability through the document stages, variation, and approval, right? This is how you keep the record. Like I showed last time as well, that record keeping is very, very essential and crucial part of any role that you do. Don't think just one, but any role that you do in general. Filing document. Every filing that we follow, um, needs to follow certain guidelines. So for example, TAFE has a very uh, decent way of following the names um, and that helps anyone identifying the document very easily. For example, there was something, um, okay, so this one, BSP PMG 430, AT2 is assessment task two, PE is portfolio evidence, TQM, TAFE, Queensland material was and well, it's a docs file. Right. What I had done since I modified some of it, for example, this one is the same thing, but I wrote was and one two and wrote the date with it. So I know I was the one who changed some part of the document, changing them. So the formatting, you know, and then I have these things. So the naming, the file naming um, will really help you a lot in locating a file. So if, for example, I don't know something right i will just go in the search button write 81 anything with 81 should really pop up my system is running a bit slow today i restarted this twice in the morning i mean once you do that anything with c with 81 should come up C81 KQ, 81 KQ, 81 bench and benchmark, you know, BA is for a benchmark answer for me, yeah, to mark it properly. Okay, but again, naming. So when you send any email, right, and you just write a crappy email without a proper subject line, without a proper filing name, the person who is reading this email, for example, if you send, send it to me without a clear subject line, increases our work when we have to go back. If you send me any file, right, without proper renaming it, like I would really, I'm not expecting it now, I was expecting it last year, but I would really expect that if I'm receiving a file from Michael, the file should say Michael BSP PMG 430 underscore 81. That's it, right? For example, for 83, if there are videos, then I expect Michael to submit me. Michael, DSP PMG 430, underscore 83, part B, video 1. 83, part B, video 2. That's it. And if you store your documents like that, it will help you as well. Forget about the others. At least like, wow, it's so great. Right? This person is so organized in terms of the filing and naming record keep yeah so when you send any any email next instance ensure that you have a correct subject line and a good file name not just pick drop drag and drop you know anyone can do that then what what are you learning here nothing 
ya. Yeah. Cool. Um, let us take our normal break. Right. So I was mentioning about filing of the project documents, right? So you need to follow your company's norms. Can't see a full screen. What is happening? Okay, let me keep the parties going here. Is it any better? Okay. Cool. Right. So you need to follow your company's documentation. So like I mentioned about TAFE uh, renaming document, right? Most of the APDC document have some codes on it. Um, also, if there are any version, you need to specify version one, version two, and have a version control register as well. But this is all about filing and documentation. Okay. Now, we are talking about MS project or another uh, management of project. So what there are many softwares available. So what they do, if you upload one version of the document on the server, and after a few months, it will remind you, you know, that you haven't used this document for a while. Would you like to review this document and update any changes? So you don't forget that, oh, okay, I haven't really viewed this document for three or four years. It's everyone is using it, but we haven't updated leg latest legislation. That could be um, the government regulation changes. For example, if there is any changes to work health and safety or anything with that, then you might not have updated with it. You know, and that's why it's important that you uh, review those documents. So there are many tools available or you can set manual reminders um, in, in your calendar as well. Right. Um, <clears throat> another essential part is monitoring the plans. So how do you monitor plans? Um, again, you can use tools or software um, you, against the original one. So you have the original ones. Um, you need to set a timeline again. So let's say example, you have a task that, okay, I need to have so-and-so supplier or resources by the end of September. You put it in your original planning that by the end of September, um, there are Gantt chart, there are critical path analysis, a lot of tools. They will provide you sequencing of them um, and monitoring as well in a Gantt chart, you know. What's the actual date, how many days you are planning, and people just need to start using it, and it will trigger you if they are not on track, you know. Um, you need to compare it with the benchmark. So let's say you have set a target of that, okay, the project has to be completed 25% within first week of the starting of the project. And with a certain quality, you know, error-free typing, um, accurate information, proper resourcing, paraphrasing, all that thing. So that's your benchmark. You can always compare with the actual benchmark that you are set for. Project report. So there are four essential types of report. Number one, project proposal, project plans, variance report, and status report. It may be useful to produce issue and risk uh, risk register, risk log as well. Reporting is an essential part of the project manual. However, the level of detail should be appropriate to the risk associated. You don't have to write everything in so much detail. Right? If you write so much detail of it, your project becomes very lengthy and no one will be interested and won't be able to read with the full attention. So you need to include all the relevant detail, not too much, not too less. Again, project deliverable is a tangible, measurable, observable output that is planned to be achieved or produced to accomplish the project or a separate part with a certain time or a certain cost. For each deliverable, you should list milestones that are to be achieved in order to produce the deliverable. What is a milestone? 
like in a real life milestone, it's a checkpoint, maybe at 25%, maybe at 50%, you would have set some milestone, you try to achieve it. <clears throat> the moment you have it, you take it off, then the next month, then the next milestone. Yeah. Which is general indicator of your progress to demonstrate whether a completion of ongoing activity contributes to the timely and overall fulfillment of the deliverables that are being achieved. So just a kindly reminder whether you are on track or, or not. Any question, comments? Is everything great so far? Okay. Cool. Let's move on to the next topic where we talk about administer and monitoring project. <clears throat> Ensure that you address people, finance, technology, information, material supply, equipment, and facility. That is all about the resources you need. You need to talk to these people. Adequate staffing for the project. Like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have enough staffing, go for recruitment of staff. Yeah. Do you identify the skills? How do you identify the skills that you need? And finding the right people. Entering and that's why your interview question has to be very much relevant to the purpose they are being hired for. So if you are hiring someone for the project management of an upcoming Ministry of Health project, right, then you shouldn't be asking them about how much of cookery experience do you have, what type of dishes do you like. You know, there'll be really inappropriate, irrelevant people. You can't ask 50 questions in an interview. You 10, 15 question is good, 40, 50, 60 question will be a lot. So you need to choose your um, interview question very carefully so you always find the right kind of people, okay? The questions are not to fill in the space. They are to really help you to identify the right people for the job. And that's why consultation with the stakeholder is very important. You design the interview question, you ask the relevant person, show it to them, hey, I really designed this interview question or this requirement for the specific role. What do you think of it? And they might be able to provide some input on that, how oh, that really makes sense or this does not make sense. So that's something that you, know, you need to um, learn from consultation as well. Working with your team, a major part of the responsibility lies in assigning the project task. In doing this, you are attempting to find staff that are more suited for undertaking certain responsibility. If I talk about myself, I'm good in attention to detail, picking up typos, picking up mistakes, um, good with numbers, good with leadership, management, training, teaching abilities, you know, but <clears throat> handling people skill and all that. But I'm not great with writing. I must admit that. So if someone asks me, if my manager Bali asks me, hey, Dushan, would you mind drafting a report for me, which is like 10, 20 pages, I'd be, oh, God, that will take me a long amount of time, decent amount of time, plus I won't enjoy it. So if you don't enjoy something, then your output is compromised, right? But if you ask me to look at the numbers and find a pattern, because I got my PhD mathematics from it, I would love to do it. Yeah, training, teaching, always happy with that, okay? So you need to identify the right person with the right skill and assign tasks appropriately. Otherwise, they're going to come back to you. Ultimately, you are the project owner. You manage the project. So if you don't, um, you know, assign it properly, then that's going to hunt you down. Right. Now, how do you report? That, again, depends on the company requirement, the project requirement, but most of the reporting could be, you know, like a face-to-face -face meeting. You prepare the document and distribute the document with everyone, and it could be via email as well. Most of the big company listed on stock exchange, they are not conducting every shareholder, oh, this is a copy. They are not trying to convince you or demonstrate something. Report is available online. They share the PDF version of it or PPT in rare occasion. Go and read it. That's it. 
right? They will say, oh, this is a project we are working on. This is the money that we go. This is the expenses that I incur, everything, right? It's just a information available and declared on some websites, on their own website, on the stock listing platform and everything, right? But most of the communication that we guys should be doing should be active communication process, two-way process. You tell your stakeholders about something, they ask you a question back, you clarify those information or missing gap, and this is how the whole process should happen. Okay? Right, please read the slides. It's all about leadership. A great leader will choose a leadership style which is suited best to the audience. Like I talked about myself, I'm not talking whether I'm a great leader or something, you know, but I change my training style based on the audience need. I realize that most of you guys are a working professional, senior in your career journey. You don't have so much time to really, uh, you know, do the work when you go home. So I change my training style, which is a very hard thing to do, I'm telling you, right? I don't like to keep quiet, especially in a classroom. I like to keep my audience engaged and busy, but then the result wasn't there. And ultimately what matters is not what you know it, what you demonstrate is equally important. You might be a great person with a lot of skills, but if you can't show it, demonstrate it on a piece of paper, not helpful. Okay, so I changed my training structure and really giving everyone an ample amount of time to complete work within the classroom hours. Right, so a good leader, a great leader will choose the leadership style based on the audience. If the audience is very junior, then they need more information, more training to it. If the audience like to be, oh, I'm fine on my own, you know, you please don't disturb me so much. I know what I'm doing. Then the leader will change the leadership style right? You should know the person, you should treat them well and all kind of those things. Yeah. Okay. So project management and leadership are two different qualities. Control. There are many variables that you must manage as a project manager. This management process is often called control and being able to control your project is important to be successful. Just so think of the many variables that you have to keep under control. One thing is a cost. You need to keep the cost under control. You need to keep people engaged. Give them enough work. If you give them very little work, they will lose interest. They'll go and disturb the others. Right? If you give them too much of work, they feel frustrated. You know, so everything in a moderate amount, everything in a balance. Yeah. Again, if you micromanage a lot, you tell them, hey, how, how are you doing? How are you doing? If you ask that thing four times a day, then again, that's a problem, isn't it? Yeah, but if you don't ask at all, another problem. You won't even know, you know, if things have slipped. Yeah, you'll only come at the no, come to know at the end that oh my god, nothing is in place, and it's too late to fix it. Yeah. Risk management. You should manage the risk based on severity. Okay, and that's always the case, not just here, everywhere. Um, for example, you guys are sitting in that classroom. Okay, what is the risk of the ceiling being fallen on you guys? In terms of percentage 
one percent, ten percent, fifty percent, less than one percent. Extreme. <laughs> extreme less or extreme more? I mean, extreme is the uh, opposite end. I would say extremely rarely that the ceiling will fall on you guys. The roof, the ceiling will fall on you guys. You know, unless it's a crack and you see, oh, there is a big hole and it can come down anytime. That's a different story. Yeah, yeah. I, and I understand what you are saying. Yeah. Um, right. Versus you guys or anyone, 90% safe. 10% I would say even less than 1%. Why I would say even less than 1%? I'm always a numbers guy. Number one, um, I had conducted training in this classroom for more than a year, for more than a year. So let's assume 250 days, considering Monday to Friday. Yeah, not always by me, by someone else. Out of this 250 days, there isn't a single day where the roof has fallen. So it's even less than one day. One divided by 250, if you do your math, it's 0 0.004. So 0.4 percentage in terms of percentage. 0.4%. So that's why I said less than one. Very, very, very minor. And if you look at 10 years time, it still hasn't fallen. Yeah. Right. I'm not going into numbers. I'm telling you how you should manage risk. So that's one factor. So if your colleague tells you, that, oh, okay, we should consider if the roof falls, what will happen? Versus you guys are going on a street, on a busy road. I know when you just step outside of this building, there is a road like a like a good traffic, busy road, right? You cross the road without watching the traffic light. What is the risk of you being hit by a car? Much more likely, yeah, if you don't follow the sign, if you don't follow the traffic, like you being hit by a tempo or a car or a truck is high likely versus you sitting in the classroom and the roof being fallen. So both of them have some risk, but you need to evaluate which one is a higher, which one is a lower and managing according. There'll be always risk in something. Can you manage all the risk? No. Can you control all the risk? No. Then what is it that we should be doing? Prioritizing them and handling them as per the priority. The one with the higher risk, right, should be taken care of first, then the lower, then the lower, right? It's always about priority and managing them well. The next thing comes to finalizing the project. The closing phase. So in a closing phase of a project, complete the final derivable, obtain stakeholder acceptance that, okay, they agree that, uh, you know, we have met the, uh, the targets, you know, what we decided to start with, you know, or there is a risk, um, there is a chance of improvement. This is what it could improve on. Evaluate the project, release all the resources, make it available for anyone to view those resources. Yeah. Read this a bit. What we are saying, the activity that plays at this stage of the project management cycle is finalizing the financial record. You know, profit or loss or any variation, right? Completing any documentation, reallocating the resources. For example, you might have borrowed a projector, right? Or you have borrowed some laptop from other department, right? Because you need it to use for a specific amount of time. Can you keep it with you? Put it back. That's what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis, isn't it? Whatever resources you are taking from this premise, from this building, you put it back. Give it back to Karina. 
she will take an entry of this laptop issued, laptop received, all that kind of thing. Yeah, so that's a reallocation of resources. An effective and efficient cost accounting system that allows you to track by all the direct and indirect costs for every project is the best way to achieve the goal. Huh? So what we are saying here is you should be able to track all the changes. Whatever was the original location, what is the variance, direct cost, indirect cost, direct cost related to the project, and direct cost could be the rental, you know. Um, could be the employee salary working in the company, but not related to the project, but they are helping you out, you know. So that's an indirect cost. Yeah. All project, by definition, must come to an end. So literally, they should have an end date that should come to an end, at least on a paper. Yeah. Then we talk about the project sign-off sheet. What is a project sign of shit that everyone signs the closer phase, you know, that, okay, I was a part of this project. This is what I had done, you know, and I'm happy with the comments being made or the information being provided. There's nothing that you can do to really improve the project or something like that. Yeah. Project sign off means project is accomplished in time. Customer is satisfied with the result outcome, met the quality and co-op project, which is the objective and performance no more, you know, project performers are no more responsible for further development without a new billing, no? You have been paid for the project, that's it done and dusted. If you want to redo the project part, you know, that's another story. You are, have to be employed again, you have to be paid again. All right? That's a project sign of thing. Finally, review of the project, and we got only a little here, what is review of the project? So business management involves continuous improvement, the crucial to business process improvement, right? It's very crucial um, to learn at every stage. And that's why we call continuous improvement. We can't say, when I can't say that I know everything in leadership, even I've been training about leadership for a, such a long time now, yeah? The moment I say that I know everything, that's the end to my learning curve, <laughs> to my learning journey, yeah? Look at the problem that arose, make suggestion how you think, okay, there might have been some problem, you know, some employee leaving the project in between or not having enough resources to take care of or finance change or the allocation change. Then you should make a note of this and, you know, have a, what could have been done better, everything should go there. That what could go better, what is it that you might have done differently, right? In your final report, you should address what you delivered as compared to what you said you would. You now, all the politician stuff. Before election, they would have promised something. <laughs> After a few years, we need to evaluate. Oh, this is what you said on, you know, 1st of January 2019. Have you delivered those? That's, that's why the scope of the document is very important. Yeah? How well did you deliver, meet the need of your client, the maintenance required for the system and changes you feel are needed in the project in line with the requirement of deliverable. And finally, any summary. Project management is often a task that is left for project managers who have received a specialist training and have been certified as a project manager. But often smaller projects are given to individuals who may have no prior training in the management. In this unit, you have taken through the basic process of managing process of any size, a small or a big process is still the same. This is it. Any question, comments? Uh, yes, uh, the doctor, I, yeah. I have a question here. Please. Um, this is in regards to uh, this is this is not a question, but uh, it's uh, a line of thinking that I have yes. in regards to uh, project management. Uh, I know that uh, all of us here we have uh, responsibilities 
or might be we have either taken some projects in the past or currently we have some projects. Uh, I have some experience in, uh, in terms of uh, infrastructure policy. Uh, in here, you, you talked about, uh, you mentioned about uh, the board. You, you mentioned, mentioned about the steering committee. Um, I see that uh, consultation is uh, one of the most important thing in risk, risking the project. Uh, like for example, um, I'm the manager of the project and then I have my board and above the board, you have the owners of the organization. Um, I, I tend to find out that uh, if there is no policy in safeguarding the project, and then they, I, I, I see that there's a risk of uh, um, uh, not com complying with the policy. Sometimes I see that there, there, there is no policy to back up that uh, project. What is the line of communication in there? So that's that's where I see if you if you can help us out in this area because uh, according to my experience, that is what I see. Uh, uh, there can be a risk to the project. You might be fired as a manager as well for not making consultations. So mm -hmm. I would like you to uh, if you could assist us in sure, in, sure. In, in draw us in, in terms of policies. Uh, what is the line of communication so that I, as a manager, don't fall into the risk of uh, uh, being fired or not consistent with uh, the policy. Mm. Thank you. No, that's a very good point, Michael. Um, so what I would do if I were in your place, uh, first of all, I'll try to find out if any previous existing project in terms of documentation, you know, so that project will have a different scope, but maybe they'll be following the same WHS policy. Maybe they'll be following the same line of communication. So if I were there, like I said, you know, then I would say, oh, okay, I'm reporting to my manager. And in between every, if say, for example, project is for three months old, then uh, at the end of first month and at the end of second month, I'm reporting to the board of director or the owner of the company via meeting, via Zoom meeting, or emailing them, hello everyone, hope this email finds you well, blah, 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 the introductory part. Um, since we approach four week of timeline of our project, um, we should have completed 33% of the project, you know, and here is my update on it. Either you are above 33 or you are below 33, right? Every time reporting will save you a lot of pain, number one. Number two, ask your manager, how they would do it and document everything, you know? So for example, if you have a constraint that you don't know what should be reported or which policy you should follow or how you should communicate, you know, you should mention that things in the constraint of the project, right? Because once your initial draft is ready, you are asking your manager or even higher authorities to sign that document that they are happy with the project scope, you know, what you are aiming to achieve, what resources will you need? What risk might be there? If it's on a piece of paper, you have done your bit. That's it. I am fairly secure that I have documented every piece of information that I have, any risk that is with the project or any lack of resources, lack of policies. You might say, oh, I don't have a clear WHS guideline. So any risk might happen is already is in place so i know because i don't know the whs policy and that's why there may be risk right that's one thing and if your managers and their manager or the owner of the company are signing those documents that means they are well aware if they're not no problem that's not your problem anymore <laughs> that's not your concern why because the moment you sign it you agree that you have read this document isn't it yeah that's the importance of a signature yeah you take that approval and a sign off sheet Okay, these are the people working on a project. I am the project in charge. I know this many things. I know this much of money, this many tools, resources, spades, time, everything. And these are the risk or the, um, you know, the, um, the known risk, you know, the known risk I would yes. classify it. So, for example, if I don't have a clear WHS policy, I know that I don't know how to train my employee to lift this particular object. Push versus pull. If there is a heavy object, whether you should push it or whether you should pull it, how to sit on it for a longer hours, 
right? How you should use your mouse and keyboard and a posture and everything. Why? Because my WHS policy does not guide me. So if someone would make a claim, oh, since you didn't tell me, I hurt my back. We knew the risk. The managers and managers have signed the problem. That's it. You can just say, sorry, I told you in the beginning, not my problem. Yeah, don't hold me for that. Yeah, is it what you were saying, Michael? Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. <laughs> that was a very good question, Michael. Very much relevant and very much real Yeah, in terms of what you might be facing. Great. Any other question? Any other thoughts? Yes, Soraya. Yes, um, there's some failing to you know, some of the the projects involve two parties. Two parties, primary and secondary. 